So let's talk about uh, ordering an ordered set, and we're going to get to a very particular kind of ordered set. So um, in the To Infinity and Beyond videos, I was emphasizing the role of order um, in the ordinal method. Get surprised, it's important, hence the name ordinal. But what does order mean? I actually never really talked very particularly about the technical definition of what an order means. And to really be careful about this, we have to do that. So let's look um, at the natural numbers, and let's assume we kind of we've constructed them, and we actually know we know what we usually know about the natural numbers. And in particular, we have this notion of less than or equal to for natural numbers. And that's what we're going to focus on. You can focus on less than, but it's slightly nicer to focus on less than or equal to it, as it turns out. Um, for natural numbers, there's some nice properties that that relationship has. Uh, one of them is uh, almost uh, too dorky to mention, uh, but it, it really is. Um, a nice thing way to start. It's called reflexivity. For any natural number a, a is less than or equal to itself. That's why that's hence the equal to part. Transitivity is probably the most important thing here. It says that for any triple of natural numbers, if a is less than or equal to b and b is less than or equal to c, then a is definitely less than or equal to c. That's a really nice thing, and it sort of chains things together in a way. Antisymmetry is uh, a important property. Because, um, for example, uh, these first two axioms, if I replaced less than or equal to with equal to, they would still be true. And we want to figure out, wait, uh, they're really different. They, they should have different properties here. Um, so anti-symmetry says that for all natural numbers a and b, if a is less than or equal to b and b is less than or equal to a, think about it for a second. That's a pretty weird situation, unless they're actually just equal. Okay. Um, basically, it's say if you can say say it's logically a little bit differently. If a is not equal to b, then you can't have a less than b and b less than a. It's just not going to work. One or the other, um, definitely not both. And the totality is actually what says one or the other is going to be true. So for all natural numbers a and b, you either have a is less than or equal to b or b is less than or equal to a. For any two natural numbers, you can actually put them in order. You can compare them. Um, uh, and let me let me uh, wait on the, this well ordering thing for a second. Let me just go down here. If we replace less than or equal to with the subset relation, so this is just one thing is a subset of another, and we just look at all sets, just all bags of things, um, then in fact we see a very Im important and interesting sim uh, similarity between the subset relationship and the less than or equal to relationship. Subsets actually satisfies all three of these things. If you just put in replace the word natural number with set and less than or equal to with subset, all these things are actually true um, for the subset relation. A subset a set is definitely a subset of itself. If one set is inside another, and then that's inside another, then the first is inside the last. And if um, one, one thing is a subset of another and vice versa, well, they have exactly the same elements, and that's what it means to be the same set. So there's actually lots and lots of cases in mathematics where these three axioms are satisfied for some relationship between objects, a relation, um, and, um, and is not just less than or equal to for numbers. Um, and less subset is the first example that we usually see. It's called a partial order. Any relationship with this, these three properties, the, the first three, it's called a partial order. Um, to make it a total order, that's what the first, fourth axiom is about. Because notice, if you have sets, um, it doesn't satisfy this last axiom. There's, you can e easily have bags of stuff, sets, where neither uh, one is inside the other or vice versa. For example, let me scroll up. Um, let's say your universe, your temporary universe here, all the things you know about are Alice, Bob, and Charlie. Here's the set Alice and Bob, and the set Bob and Charlie. It's not true that uh, the set Alice and Bob is a subset of the Bob and Charlie set, because Alice is not in the second one. It's also not true that the Bob and Charlie set is a subset of Alice and Bob, because Charlie's not in here. They're just not comparable. If you say which one is bigger or which one should be inside the other, it's just it's meaningless. You shouldn't be able, you're not, you're not be able, able to compare them. Um, there's a, just a very brief aside. There's a lot of situations in real life where you have some vague idea that you kind of know when one thing is greater than another, but you don't necessarily know for all two things where how to compare them, like sports teams, for example. Um, if it's very common that um, you start violating some of these axioms, and certainly the totality, you couldn't just say, it's just obvious how I rank teams, something like that. Um, or if you say, I want to 
look at how look at people and rank them in some way it's dangerous if you start assuming this implicitly that everybody's comparable in some way anyway um, natural numbers if you look at natural numbers um, these it has all these properties um, and including the totality and that's one of the nice things that's true about um, natural numbers if you look at integers or real numbers they also satisfy all the four these four properties they're totally ordered you can compare any two integers or any natural numbers um, but what they don't satisfy is this more more deeper and more profound um, axiom the axiom of or the the idea of well ordering the property of well ordering um, so any non this is what it says any non empty set of natural numbers has a smallest element just one particular element that is in that set and is smaller than everything else of course it's equal to itself but it's less than or equal to everything else um, integers that fails because for example just take the entire set of integers you can go minus one minus two minus three minus four you'll never have to stop there's no smallest there's no, no left endpoint of the integer number line if you allow negative numbers natural numbers remember start at zero and go up any non-empty set of those has a smallest element um, that's actually something you'd have to prove based on the, the definition we just gave but it's a little technical and I'm not gonna do it okay hopefully it's fairly obvious um, real numbers also or even positive real numbers come to think of it uh, doesn't have smallest like one half one third one fourth one fifth one sixth one seventh that's a set of real numbers that doesn't have a smallest element okay so it's really 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 nice it's an amazingly nice property that natural numbers have this well ordering property as well as of course all the other properties of a total order um, and it turns out that this notion is going to be it's the foundation of sophisticated ideas of induction and recursion and hence uh, the foundation of of the idea of an ordinal number okay so um, one of the one cool thing about natural numbers as constructed in the way we've constructed them above remember with this this idea of just uh, empty set and curly braces um, is that to compare two natural numbers with that definition of what a natural number is it's the same as the subset relation and it's the same as the is an element of relation um, so for example um, 0 and 1 should be less than 2 well if you look at the definition of 2 it is the set whose elements are 0 and 1 so in fact definitely 0 and 1 are elements of 2 but they're also subsets um, the empty set is sort of kind of trivially a subset of anything because it doesn't have any anything that couldn't be in the bigger set and remember what one was um, it's this set whose ele only element is the empty set okay is its element also in two you betcha there it is sitting right there um, similarly if I look at um, you know seven that's the set zero one two three four five six and um, for example six is the set zero one two three four five that's definitely a subset of zero one two three four five six so it's pretty it's pretty cool it's not it's something we're going to use uh, tremendously but it's it sort of says that for this amazingly beautiful simple definition of natural numbers you can say oh how do I tell if one natural number is less than or equal to another oh I just use the two most basic relations that, that set theory already comes equipped with one thing is inside the other um, as an element or one one box has the same elements but maybe just not as many as the other box okay so what about um, these infinite guys Omega and s Omega that's where it's starting to get interesting okay so by by definition um, Omega was just defined to be the set of all the finite those finite natural numbers the set of all natural numbers um, and um, that means for any natural number a a is definitely an element of Omega you know what, what is Omega it's 0 1 2 dot 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 oh that's that's Omega plus one um, so Omega is just oops I should have said let's see let's put it right here um, that's equal to 0 1 2 dot 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 okay so that's gonna say that any natural number is less than Omega so this is the amazingly uncontroversial controversial statement that any finite number is less than infinity if we think of Omega as the smallest kind of ordinal infinity okay so that that makes sense that it's not violating our intuitions there what about s of Omega remember that was take the whole of Omega which is the bag including all the ordinary finite natural numbers and then include the bag itself include Omega itself that's the cool trick um, okay well Omega is certainly in there it's one of the elements of that bag and so Omega is an element of its successor 
And if, so we can still use this relationship. And you can still use the subset relationship too. Um, but you can use the element relationship to say, okay, if I take that as a way of comparing these guys, it's still going to give the right answer that I think omega should be less than its successor. Okay, good. All righty. We'd like to see that any finite number is less than infinity, and infinity should be less than basically infinity plus one, the successor. Okay. Um, so here's what we um, what we want to do with well ordering. Okay. We've got we've started to get a notion that um, we have a way of ordering the natural numbers, and that they satisfy these wonderful properties. And we've even got an inkling that when we include the first two inf infinite quantities or things that we've constructed, if we still keep using this relationship, for example, um, it's still going to have the right properties. Okay, so um, let's remember the perspective here. Everything is a set, and even a number has been defined to be a set. Basically, just you know, five is just zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, so um, the other thing to note is I'm just going to claim, and this is where you'd have to read the book or you know read some book about exactly how does this help you. Um, I claim that well ordering is the kind of ordering of objects that makes very very general recursion arguments and induction arguments work. Um, it was discovered that that's exactly what you're using at its fundamental level when you're doing recursion, the idea of do something again and again and again and again and so on. And induction, the idea of if it's true for this and this and this and this and so on, then it's true for all things. Okay? So here's what we're going to do. Basically, we're going to define an ordinal number as just to be a well ordered set. Okay? Alrighty. Let's so let's take this as our, our provisional definition. Okay, so hopefully ordinary finite numbers are going to be examples of these guys. Well yeah, okay. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's how we constructed 6 in the first place. Does this still satisfy our condition? Absolutely. We just have to tell you what the ordering is. Well, it's the obvious ordering. 0 is less than 2, equal to 2, 2 is less than or equal to 4, 3 is less than or equal to 3, 4 is less than or equal to 5, with the usual ordering. Okay. Um, that is a set with a very particular ordering, and you can check that it has all the properties. It's a well ordering. Um, and that's, so the number 6 is still okay. Alrighty. So, um, all the finite sets, and in, other, in particular the number six, which is defined to be this set with six elements, we've now made a more precise version of what, an, what a number should be. And this is what makes it an ordinal number, not something else, is we're not just thinking of it as a set, we're thinking of it as a set with an order on it. You might say, oh wait, that violates your, your uh, condition. I thought everything was supposed to be a set. Well, it turns out you can discover how an order relationship is guess what? Just a set. But let's not worry about that too much. Okay? So, a couple of things. Remember, the axioms for well ordering, the, the most uh, non trivial one of them, is that every non empty set uh, of a well ordered set has to have a smallest element. Okay? Um, certainly that's true. It's pretty obviously true here of like this set, the set th which represents the number six. Um, this guy has uh, a, further, a couple further properties that we're not going to see all the time. Any non empty set of these guys, like uh, let's say 1, 3, 5, that also has a largest element as well as the smallest. Okay, That's not too hard to, to see. That's always going to be true for a finite set. Um, every element has an immediate predecessor as well. So in 5 here, it has something that it was the successor of. It was just right after 4. Okay, There's nothing in between. And you might think, well, well, of course. I mean, that's that's the whole deal, right? We were all about we were all about creating things with successors. Everything's got to have an immediate predecessor, right? Well, that's not true. Okay. So, for example, um, uh, let's let's start to see how omega and s of omega start to violate some of these extra properties that aren't really essential. The smallest infinite number, ordinal number, is omega. And remember, we had provisionally we had originally defined it as just the set of natural numbers. Now we're going to be more precise. It's the set of natural numbers with their usual ordering. So it's that ordered set. It's that concept that be, defines the ordinal number omega. Um, so, you know, just when I say usual, it means 2 less than or equal to 5, 3 less than or equal to 7. Nothing, nothing weird. Okay. Notice that every element in here still has an immediate predecessor. But this first thing that we noted about finite numbers, that's false now. Um, not every set has a largest element. In particular, just take the entire set. It doesn't have a large element, or take all the even numbers, or all the odds, or all the primes—not tr less, much less trivially—doesn't um, have a largest element. Okay. 
If you go to S of omega, that's where you start seeing um, something really genuinely interesting about the order. Um, and that is, uh, well, let's, let's just say what the order, um, the order is. Okay, to be really careful, I need to tell you for any two elements in this set, how they compare. That's what it means to define an order, and therefore it's what it means to define an ordinal number. Um, so uh, just the usual ordering when comparing finite numbers. So one is less than seven, etc. And then omega just is coming after everything. So it's just saying that if I have a finite number and omega, then a is less than or equal to omega. And of course, it's a less than or equal to itself. It has to be. So this is what, what uh, I meant by saying we got to make sure that this dot, 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 comma, omega means something. It doesn't mean that I have to write down all the finite numbers and then I write omega. That wouldn't make sense. The definition here is that if I can just tell you, if you hand me two objects from this bag, I just need to tell you which is in front of which. And you don't, I don't have to create an infinite number of objects from the bag or anything like that. It's very cool. It's very a very implicit definition. You give me stuff, and I tell you yes or no question. I don't have to create an infinite amount of stuff. That's crucial. If you happen to give me omega as one of the things that, uh, of the pair that the give, you give me, the answer is very easy. I don't even have to look at the other one. It's going to be bigger. Okay? And that's the definition of the order. It's easy to show that that is a well-ordered set, even though I've put in this new guy omega. Um, Basically, if I just have any set including omega, unless it's just singleton omega, uh, guess what? The least element is not going to be omega. So throw that out and then use the fact that the, the set of integers themselves is, is well-ordered. Okay. Again, there's stuff to prove here if you want to be really careful, depending on the level of naivete you want. But you certainly can, and people have done this incredibly rigorously. So one thing about omega, uh, the set omega plus 1, now, omega has been kind of demoted in it to being just an element. Um, and, but it's a very special element. It's called a limit element. It is not something that has immediate predecessor. That's a new thing. This is our first example of an or a well-ordered set where here's omega. You can't pick out any particular natural number, 7, 11, 17, a billion, a Google, Googleplex. None of those are the ones that's right before omega. It still has all the nice properties of a well-ordered set. But it doesn't have the property that every element has an immediate predecessor. And it's really cool that it doesn't, because this is where it all gets interesting. And I'll continue in the next part.